and welcome to this episode of Reality Scoop. I'm your host, Shonda D. I'm here today with a very special guest, um, Ed Cleveland from the Sound Therapy and Healing Center in Manchester, Connecticut. He's going to uh, talk to us today about holistic um, sound therapy and how it can help uh, for therapeutic, um, you know, overall wellness. He's going to give us a demonstration today on his gong and some of the singing bowls that he's also brought with us today. So welcome to Reality Scoop. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Oh, wonderful for you to be here. I'm so happy. I'm really excited because this is something um, new for me. Never really ventured into holistic sound therapy. So uh, when I heard heard or found out about your techniques and your methods, I was like, oh, wow, this is something that can really, you know, benefit others. So I'm um, glad to have you here with all of your wonderful equipment. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, so tell me a little bit about how you came to um, get into the gongs and the singing bowls and, and the techniques. Well, it actually uh, started with my martial arts training. Um, I had... Uh, um, learned how to move energy, how to um, adjust your breath, your breathing, your mental focus through discipline and, and training over and over again mm -hmm. um, to advance and to acquire this energy to be able to break things. So then I figured, um, and actually I had gotten injured, that why not spend some time to learn how to make adjustments within the body from uh, the injuries that I had acquired oh, wow. through different wow. years. So, um, <laughs> How long did it take you to recover from your injuries before you were able to transition into something like this? Um, well, it was a combination of that and uh, different um, points of life. Uh, mm -hmm. We all have ups and downs yes, in life. Right. And when we hit those low stages, we kind of look around and say, all right, things aren't working. Mm -hmm. You know, things are happening. I need to do something to just kind of switch and, and get my life to go back into a, another direction again. Mm -hmm. Most people had to do that. So I looked for different things that were available, um, starting with Reiki mm -hmm. to learn how to adjust and, and find out about the energy system of the body to then um, create uh, well-being and okay. wellness. Nice. So um, originally, did you start in Southington, I believe you were? Yes. Okay. And how long were you there? Uh, I've been in Southington for quite a while. I uh, raised my two kids there, mm -hmm. um, which was also part of the reason why I want to get into this because I want to be able to help them mm -hmm. uh, to share different methods um, and also teach them how to work their memory skills to be um, better in school and to have better grades. Nice. So, wow. yeah. so did you find that after working with your, your kids, uh, was that kind of like a guinea pig factor in there, <laughs> you know? Well, we don't ask them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they did you see improvement? Yes, I over time. Yes. Nice. With yeah. their what? Focus, concentration, memory. Yes, yes. Okay, the nice. Skill, the grades. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm. Wonderful. So, um, and then you recently moved to Manchester. Yes. So why Manchester? Um, it just came into place. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I follow my path. Um, uh, I have a business coach, mm -hmm. and she helped me adjust some of the relocating that I was seeing coming. Okay. And she helped me with the, the location to be able to live and to work in the same place. Place, nice. So, yeah. yeah. And so uh, when I visited your studio, uh, your space is, is pretty awesome, by the way. Uh, it looked very tranquil, homey, uh, very inviting. So um, you have two floors, two levels. And you have like a few different rooms. Uh, I really enjoyed also um, the mirror. What is that mirror called again? It's called a uh, infinity mirror. Infinity mirror. Oh, it is wild, <laughs> but I really enjoyed that. So um, if you get a chance to visit Ed at his shop, um, ask him to see the infinity mirror. It's very eye opening. Uh, also, you uh, have extensive bowls, singing bowls. Yes. So uh, tell me a little bit, I, I know you brought one bowl with you today, you can bring them all, because uh, they're very valuable and very heavy and delicate. Mm -hmm. So tell us about first um, about the gong and then about the bowls, how you, you know, transition the two. Okay, 
Well, the um, the gong, I usually play it separate from the singing bowls because there's usually a lot of them um, and the, the sound and the tones are different. Mm -hmm. When I'm playing the gong, I'm asking for people to look for the um, the, the, um, the waves, the wobbles, the microtonality that the gong will make through mm -hmm. overtones. So th that's more on the overtone basis. The singing bowls have one particular sound, so I use those sounds to then help to quiet the mind sticking in with those, the sounds that those particular bowls make because they, they stick at that one note mm -hmm. um, where this is the multi- uh, vibrational yeah and you know those vibrations uh, speaking personally those vibrations are very powerful when um, he actually did a demonstration on the bowls and you know using some of the different mallets and the sounds which we're gonna see today I could actually feel the vibrations in my lower back which was very um, uh, very eye-opening uh, because I wasn't expecting to, you know, actually feel the vibrations. So they're very powerful. A lot of people say, oh, it's just sound waves going through the brain, whatever. No, it actually it resonates through the body. And that energy is very powerful and can help, you know, shift or realign whatever is uh, out of place. Yeah, exactly. Is that, that right? So tell me uh, some of your um, stories that you've seen, like, and transitioning people's lives. How, how's that happen there, for there, you? There's a lot of them. With um, the way the body works is your body's vibrating differently. Mm -hmm. The bone vibrates different from the muscles, right. with the fluid, with uh, your brain matter. Mm -hmm. And when the sounds are going through, it'll, they'll actually um, shake and bring a person to um, notice certain parts of the body that are like lower back is yeah. starting to tingle. So it's, it's working right through you similar to you know, like you were invisible, the sound waves go right through. Mm -hmm. And by shaking up and moving those different parts, it can help shift and move things around within the body, um, uh, relieve pain, stress. Some people feel like it's pulling in pain and inflammation out. Mm. Um, some people even see colors and shards of light when their eyes are closed wow. um, with playing the gong because it creates this a very unique thing within each person's body and each person is different so um, they each person has a different experience okay yeah that's understandable um, so in order to get to this point what obstacles uh, besides your accident did you have to overcome in order to really master this I mean and you're not really a master because you're constantly training is that right yes okay yeah. so I mean in order to really call yourself a master what what does that entail? Um, in certain modalities, there are master levels like Reiki, which could be a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, but traditionally, it's something like this, 15 years, yeah, that's 20 a long years. Time. So it, it, there's, there's really a lot to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So tell us about this gong here. So this is a singing bowl gong. It's made from 200 singing bowls that are three, four, five hundred years old. Um, they were melted down. Uh, my gong teacher, Mitch Nur, had them made and brought into the United States. Uh, I happened to see it um, available. There was, he brought three of them in at that time. Um, so I acquired uh, uh, purchasing it and he said that it was only for people in the advanced gong camp mm. so I took the 10-day gong camp to learn how to play it before playing it for another person because it's very very powerful and it's something you really should learn yeah definitely now from looking at this gong it's very intimidating <laughs> and a lot of people say oh god it's so loud like why do you want to listen to that no it's a soft sound that's very soothing so um, you'll see that later on when he does the demonstration. It's not loud at all. It's not like you're in the Kung Fu movie, bong, <laughs> no. So uh, I think people have that, um, just that stereotype of a gong. So I just want to let you know that's not what this is. Uh, this is more for um, therapy. So tell us about the singing bowl. So singing bowls, um, well, there are uh, singing bowls that are made from the alloy. Okay. Um, this particular one is crystal. It's also gold-plated. So the sound 
like I was mentioning, is one note. So it just has that one pitch. Yeah. But with a handheld, I can start to change okay. the sound by the different ways I move it. Right. So therefore, I can do different things with a person's body. If somebody's having a headache, I can create some sounds. I can go around the, the person's head. And I can do some things, and I can invite it to pull it away because now mm -hmm. they're following the sound as I'm pulling the the bowl away from yeah. the body. So it's actually drawing the headache wow. out. That's nice. And uh, yeah, and that was like still uh, vibrating. They, yeah, they played yeah. for a while. Wow. That's pretty cool. So let's talk about what are these different instruments that you use? Um, these are different mallets. Each mallet creates a different sound. Um, it was said that this gong has 88 different harmonics in each place that you play it. So when you multiply that 88 times all the different spots that you play it mm -hmm. with all the different mallets, uh, different friction mallets, you're multiplying that 88 many, many, many times over. Okay. So these all create a different sound within the gong. Okay. So how long have you been playing this? Uh, three years ago, I took the 10-day advanced gong camp. Okay. And I'm redoing it for my second term next week. Oh, so nice. So I'm going back for another 10-day round. Okay. Yeah. And uh, how long have you been playing the singing bowls? Singing bowls, I started around... Uh, uh, 2002, okay. 2003. Wow. Yeah. And how long does that take to really, um, ma not master, but yeah, yeah. really do it well? Well, I, I, I offer a course and I teach people. It's a six hour course. Mm -hmm. And within that six hours, how to properly hold the mallet, how to connect with the bowl, how to listen with the bowl, knowing what the bull is feeling, finding the range within the bull, because okay. the, right, the bulls kind of speak with you. It yeah. likes to be played within this certain amount of range. And then when you're incorporating with other bulls, how they interact, how the sound moves around the room. Mm -hmm. And these are very, very important things people need to know um, in meditations, because as you're bringing a person deeper into a meditative state, you want them to shift into lower levels of consciousness. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so you don't really want something all of a sudden loud to pull them out. Mm. So I teach people to work that. And then once they have the basics, then they need to continue on their own because mm -hmm. training is the key. Train, train, yes. train. There's no shortcuts. Okay. No, the weekend well, course is just to start. Yeah. It's to get you the, the foundation. Now, when someone goes to your uh, sound therapy training center, uh, what is the average session? Is it like 30 minutes, an hour, 90 minutes? Um, they can go 30 minutes to up to an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about what challenges people have. So a lot of times I do that for free. Okay. They're coming in, they're discussing. They're also giving themselves permission to release those things that they were holding, that mm. they, they came for. So I let them take that out, um, let it come to surface because they need permission from themselves yeah. to move that energy. So right. um, after I get them to get their permission, then I start to work. And, okay. Yeah. Nice. And so we talked a little bit about what is the accreditation in this type of work uh, because you get a lot of people who say they're Reiki masters and they're not. So what should a person look for is in terms of credentials, like who's real and who's not real? Well, uh, that can be a, a, a tricky thing because a lot of people self-learn um, mm. and you could be making a lot of mistakes. You know, some people say, well, if I had the right intentions, of course, people that made the largest mistakes in our world had the right intentions. intentions yeah. So it's not necessarily 100% intentions. It's what is the instrument, what's the authenticity of how far back does it go? What was it meant for? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of information that you need to know about the history of the instrument and what it's used for to then put that into your practice. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, finding a person that has a teacher is, is one sign of a mm -hmm. person having training. Okay. Because <laughs> you, you know, you don't have a teacher, then you, yeah. where'd, where'd you learn? Yes, exactly. So, a Cracker Jack box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't want that. Yeah. So um, over time, uh, would, would you say how many sessions does a person need 
to really uh, feel the vibrations uh, loosening up um, whatever they're they're carrying, whether it's emotional, physical. Uh, what's the average that you've seen for uh, wellness to take effect? Um, it could go, um, each person is different. So it depends on how deep it is mm -hmm. because time is the factor of how deep a right. certain ailment is within right. the body. So it's like peeling away layers of the onion. Okay. So some people can see results within a, uh, a group meditation. Right. Um, some people need a few private sessions. Mm -hmm. Some people also like to learn the training behind it because you're now getting a well-round set of information of how the group works, how the, the privates work, mm -hmm. how the bowls, because now you're, you're and then you can get into it and learn how to work on yourself and continue your training. Mm -hmm. um, like I'm going on four years now to um, finish my group of classes with the gong. So okay. um, next year, I uh, hope I'm completing that. Yeah, yeah. Not completing it, but completing this phase. Yeah, because you're always learning, right? Yes. Yeah. And how many gongs do you have? Um, I have several. I have two larger ones, mm -hmm. um, and then I have smaller ones that help bridge the gap to these, these other sounds. Um, but this is a very, very low, it's a first octave, a sharp, and then I have a second octave, um, uh, D sharp. So I play them in the fifth harmonics, which helps have people um, have that sense of, of wellness and relaxation. It's, okay. it's very calm and soothing to have those low yeah. tones. tones. Oh, yeah. So what do the low tones do, if anything? What do they do? Um, they help bring you um, more calmness. Mm. Um, higher tones or tension, even in guitar string, and higher string tension creates more arousal, more, you know, I want to get up and I want to do some things. Yeah. But in a meditation, you want to work the lower end because you're in there for the relaxation and the stress reduction. And our adrenals take a big hit from all the fight and flight things yes, that we go through. Definitely. So, yeah, we need calm out, okay. chill out time. So, uh, I see you have your bell here, the hand bell. Uh, I just want you to hold that up just briefly. Uh, so people can see that. And so what is that? Is that, is that, is that what it is, just a handbell? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, it's, it's called a uh, Ganti and a Vajra um, from India, mm -hmm. um, uh, from Tibet. In India, it's uh, Drilbu and Dorje, so different names okay. uh, from different uh, countries. But this has a, a higher pitch sound, um, but the, the history of the sound goes way back. And... Um, the class I took on this uh, mm -hmm. was six hours oh, wow. of, of learning all the detail, what everything means within the bell, how they're supposed to be played together, what mm -hmm. hand you're supposed to use. use. So the, these are things that go way back in history, um, 18,000 years. Mm -hmm. um, and if a person doesn't learn that and they just play the bell without the other part, they're kind of missing out okay. on what's going to be doing. So um, this is ceremonial. Yes for rituals of prayer prayer meditation, meditation. yes yeah. so i'm going to have you uh if you would kindly demonstrate for us some of the sounds of uh, holographic therapy which is pretty cool and it works uh, along with the the neuro messages that we get in our brain so uh the just do it all okay <laughs> knock yourself out so with this um, I would go around a person. into a very, very relaxed state of yes. mind and consciousness. I, I feel it. I'm feeling it right now, too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to take a nap. <laughs> so I was actually creating a sound chamber in my mouth, a yeah. uh, little whistling to go into the tone to kind of bridge them and then work them together as an instrument. Mm -hmm. And again, that takes time, takes practice, it takes some, some training to of kind course. of know what you're going to yeah, be definitely. doing with that. And then with the gong, um, should I face it this way or? Yeah. 
So the gong have a lot of different instruments or mallets. With the gong, you're looking to listen for the overtones, the wobbles. this but I'm standing behind here and it I feel the vibrations are very powerful I can actually feel the vibrations at the base of my uh, neck Amazing, amazing. I really feel so like happy. I feel like, woo. Oh God, this is awesome. So how old is this gong? The gong was made uh, probably, well, I got three years ago, so maybe four years old, mm -hmm. but it's the alloy um, of the bowls that were broken um, there in a location that my teacher knows where okay. it has. Um, had the uh, elder craftsmen melt them down and make up some gongs to bring to the United States. Nice, so that's, very nice. So, yeah. so, Ed, where can people find you? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? 
Uh, I am the face of Facebook. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the walking advertisement, people uh -huh. always say that. Uh, yes, I am, I'm on Facebook um, at the Ed Cleveland Reiki and Sound Therapy Training Center, located at 264 Main Street, Manchester. Um, I used to be called, uh, my establishment was the Healer's Lounge. Um, I switched over into okay. this newer name to nice. um, work the and so training. who would you recommend that people follow up if they're not in your area a book to read what do you uh, recommend my teacher mitch nurse having the sound workers cookbook chapter one at my location um, in october through from the 20th through the 22nd oh, nice. um, and he's gonna have a bunch of different chapters um, gonna be doing all over the united states but it's, it's going to actually be a book that you can actually take the class learn the instruments, learn the authentic way. Okay. So that's what I would definitely recommend. Well, wonderful. Well, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone for joining us today here on Reality Scoop. Please go to Facebook and like Reality Scoop on Facebook. You'll see my face. So uh, I'm also on Twitter at Diva Shonda D. And you can write to Reality Scoop at realityscoop1 at gmail. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.